Okay, let us move into a dream. And this week's dreamer is a woman who is 40 years old. And um, I'm imagining she's British because she says, I'm a full time mum, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is uh, really charming. Okay, the title of her dream is Pine Needle Elixir for Men. And here's the dream. I possess some kind of potent male elixir for health. It is a sticky clear syrup made from pine needles. I'm not sure what to do with it. I'm being interviewed, or it's the first day of a new job, a job I'm not sure I want, but because I have this elixir, I have applied and am right for it. My new boss, a woman, is showing me around. She's not the kind of woman I connect with, Maybe a career woman in a cheap suit or sportswear running a place for men, a gym or a male health center. I don't think my boss knows I have this elixir. I'm waiting until she's done showing me around to present it. I'm pretending to be interested, but I know I just want to present the elixir and be done with it. I'm not interested in this place. I'm not sure how to use the elixir or really anything about it. As soon as I have the opportunity to start the job, I start asking questions about it to my new boss. Is it safe? What should I say about it? I don't want to make false claims. I possess this elixir kind of reluctantly. I have a vague sense that it may need to be administered through a blowjob. I really don't want to have to do that to all the men here and feel dread about it. I think of the possibility of catching a disease if I have to give a blowjob to that many men. I hope there's another way to take it and that I can just offer it and allow the men to administer the elixir to themselves if they want. I really don't want to be much a part of it. There's a sense that I'd rather not have to be involved in all this, but it's maybe an opportunity, or my duty as possessor of this elixir question mark and for comments she says uh, the context is I have just turned 40 what seems like a, a significant transition I'm trying to figure out who I am again after a lifetime of not listening to my needs and desires and really trying to turn the tide and figure out what is next for me in this new stage of life I desire a more potent relationship with my creativity and I'm doing what I can to carve small moments for creativity amongst the demands for mother, of motherhood. I have also been trying to be more present as I am often overtaken by thought and doing and often feel alienated from my body. After a period of two years of very depleted sleep, I recently reclaimed the night for myself and am finally starting to get sleep. I wish it hadn't taken me so long to make this change. The main feelings in the dream, she says, are feeling like I just wanted to pass this elixir on so it could be used. I felt no power possessing it and really didn't want to demand that I get on my knees to administer it. There was a detachment from what was happening, the job I now had, and what it might demand of me. And for additional context, the dreamer says, The environment of the gym or male health center reminds me of my first job, a place I worked in at weekends when I was 15. It was a bodybuilding gym, and I really didn't like it much and all the people who worked there. They hired me because I was pretty and young, and the men liked to see me on the reception. The women, woman that ran it was a female bodybuilder, and she had a bodybuilding husband. To me, they were ugly, vain, boring, full of steroids, and not very nice people. The wor this world lacked creativity, culture, beauty, style, intellect, all the things that I was interested in. So I have to say that um, when I was picking dreams this morning before uh, we recorded and I saw this one, I thought, 
Oh, I bet Joseph is going to have a lot to say about this dream. <laughs> Can't imagine why. <laughs> oh, oh, me either. <laughs> okay. But, but where I want to start is the difference between what's actually happening in the dream and the amount of fantasy material that the dream ego introduces. Mm -hmm. Because the dream itself doesn't have an awful lot to the story. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is full of an awful lot of fear and assumptions on mm -hmm. the dream ego side, which probably have to be confronted. Well, if we begin right at the beginning, mm -hmm. first of all, there's the title of the dream. And I think she titled it An Elixir for Men or something. Pine Pine, pine needle. needle Elixir for Men. So I'm I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Joseph attack the pine needles because I know where you're gonna go with that. Uh, no, please. Oh, you do? Because I don't. I have, I'm not sure. At <laughs> least go for it's, it. It's well, I mean, we'll get there, but I'm thinking of the myth of Addis. Could be. Okay, but, but I but I actually wanted to start with this um this word elixir because I looked mm -hmm. it up. It's used throughout the dream, and it and and here are the synonyms. Again, this is Merriam-Webster: a substance held capable of changing base metals into gold, mm -hmm. which is the same thing as the alchemical philosopher's stone, and it's a substance held capable of prolonging life indefinitely. Uh, or a cure all. So it is it it's the sort of magical thing that transforms. And I I I mean here's my my little first pass on this dream, I guess. I I'm um I thought that the new boss who uh the the, the dream ego seems to have some disdain for, you know, that that she's she's a career woman in a cheap suit or something. Not yeah. not my kind of person. It's like, well, when the dream ego has disdain for a same-sex figure, it's like, okay, shadow, right? So her shadow is a female boss. And it, it mirrors a little bit this experience that she had when she was younger of working in this bodybuilding gym. And she says, you know, I, I didn't like this couple. They're, it's not, you know, they're not, what were some of the um, adjectives? They, they were vain. Vain, uh, lack, lacked uh, creativity, culture, style, beauty, intellect. Yes, I'm sure it's true. But again, what are the values that are egocentric or are embraced by the ego? So we can imagine that this woman embraces creativity, culture, style, beauty, intellect. But then the shadow is what are the qualities that are ego dystonic or that are rejected by the ego? And here it's power. It's power that is rejected by the ego, whether it's the power of the bodybuilder, um, and uh, you know, and um, or the the boss as the dream figure, the boss in the cheap suit. Um, you know, she has power, and this this dream ego feels kind of disdainful of it. So I have a feeling that her own power and effectiveness is somewhat in the shadow for her, but she has the elixir. She has the thing that can transform it. And she knows that she needs it because in her associations, she said, I desire a more potent relationship with my creativity. Mm -hmm. So she, she even used that word, you know, potent comes from same similar uh, root as power, potency. The, the storyline that I'm kind of tracking in the dream it is the storyline of being one down. Mm -hmm. she, our dream ego is the one with the elixir. She's yeah. got, she has the power. She's got the stuff. But as the dream wends its way along, uh, the way that it's administered, it's as if she has to administer it, and she has to administer it by giving these men blowjobs. Instead of being able to use it herself, mm -hmm. yeah. for and what I thought of mythologically is uh, the the myth of uh, Psyche and Eros, where uh, Psyche is um, living with and kind of married to the god Eros, and Psyche is a human woman. And she dares to look upon him, and in so doing, spills 
hot wax on him. Uh, and off he goes. Um, he's out of there. And Psyche then has to do all these tasks uh, to earn uh, her, her way back to uh, civilization and, and favor. And her very last task is to go into Hades and get Persephone's beauty box to give to Aphrodite, her mother-in-law. And after she literally goes all the way to hell and back and gets mm-hmm. the beauty box, something wakes up in her, and it's as if her internal dialogue is, hey, I did all the work. I'm the one that got the special beauty box. What am I going to give it to you for? Right. I want this. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking for uh, in the dream, is that place of turnaround that doesn't happen uh, in in this dream. of It's my elixir. I've got it. I want to use it for my own uh, advancement and growth. Yes. But I, but I want to say that the thing about the blowjob is so interesting, right? Uh-huh. Because that would be a very weird way to administer a medication. Because <laughs> actually what happens in a blowjob is you, take, you ingest something. You don't put something yes. into someone. Right. And she even says somewhere, I was looking, you know, that she would sort of have to go down on her knees. Yes. So there's something about um, being receptive to the masculine principle, right? So she doesn't want to do that or she's worried that it's going to make her ill. But but I think in some sense, that's what's needed. Not to not to be, you know, uh, um, subject to men, but to be to to be to to sort of be open to the masculine principle that. That somehow, I think that if she gave all those men the blowjobs, in some sense, that would be the elixir. And I'm, obviously, this is the fanciful language of the dream, not, not a literal uh, suggestion. But, but it's interesting that the dream ego is a little bit like, no, I don't want to do that. But that might be what is required to, to take in this, the masculine, for, the force, the forcefulness of the masculine, which she started to do by reclaiming the night so that she can begin to sleep. Hmm. Hmm. (laughs) No, we're waiting for you, Joseph. (laughs) You're looking so thoughtful. (laughs) It's just that the the dream is, um, the dream is full of so much um, resentment. Yeah. The dream is just full of resentment. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like the, um, the action of the dream is so small. It's so bare yeah. bones, but it's all slathered with resentment, which makes me wonder how much of the very basic structure of her life is is slathered or plastered with resentment, which makes it so unclear how to orient to things. So if I just look at the facts of the dream, I have pine syrup. I interview for a job. A woman shows me around. I ask questions about the syrup. That that's all. That's the only action of the dream. Mm-hmm. Everything else is this kind of resentful subtext that she is introducing, the dream ego is introducing into the process. Is it an elixir? How does she know it's an elixir? She knows nothing about it. She has a fantasy that it's an elixir, but she's asking questions because she doesn't know if it's an elixir. She wants to think it is. Is this a job? Has she been hired? Is this woman asking her to do anything? She's already decided she doesn't want to do anything. She doesn't even want to be there. But nobody's asked her to be there. Nobody's asked her to do anything. She doesn't even know that it's a medicament, no pun intended, um, or that it's going to have any kind of positive effect. And she's fantasizing about giving blowjobs to some grand number of guys in this gym as she's saying, well, I don't want to have to do that. But I can't stop myself from thinking about it. 
Well, who's the one who's thinking about all those dicks? <laughs> no, no one, the dream maker isn't whipping all those dicks out and waving them at her. <laughs> There's not an army of men with erections all standing looking at her expectantly for healing. She's the one who's fantasizing about providing blowjobs to some army of expectant men who will interpret this as a healing process. And then the ego says, but I don't want to do that. But the ego is the one who's generating the fantasy. Mm -hmm. So what I hear in the dream is a classic neurosis that the things that I'm fantasizing about are the things that are not allowed or the things that I'm considering are the things that I'm also attacking. But the dream is very simple. You have some syrup, you don't know what it's for, and you could ask some questions about what it's for. And all the other intrusive dynamics of whether or not you have to be on your knees or whether or not you have to service armies of men or whether or not you're an employee or you should take the job or not take the job are totally irrelevant. The question is, what's the syrup? What's it good for? And do you care about that in any particular way? So to me, there's such an intrusion of neurotic material into something that is is actually of just a simple inquiry. If we take this to her creativity, you have a creative impulse. How complicated are you making it? And we see this all the time. Somebody, let's say, who's been an accountant, they wake up and they want to, you know, they think, God, I'd love to learn how to paint. My mm-hmm. goodness the machinations they often have to go through to get themselves to a painting class. Well, what if I'm not any good? What if people shame me? I have to be perfect. Uh, And then there's this, where am I going to get the time? I really shouldn't do that, but I could do this. Should it be acrylic? Should it be (laughs) ink pastels, oil pastels? Maybe I should do pen and ink. And this kind of mountain of stuff Hmm. accretes around something that is so simple. You know, my friend, you wish to learn to paint, sign up for a class, learn how to paint. But this, you know, tidal wave of complications and distress and this intrusion of my self-esteem and whether or not somebody thought I would paint a good picture when I was in first grade. So all the neurotic material interferes massively into some, and this is true about all of us, by the way, interferes in something which is perhaps a very simple inquiry about a little thing and what it may or may not mean. So my first um, curiosity would be to look up what pine syrup is good for Hmm. Mm -hmm. or not good for, Mm -hmm. just in the kind of an herbal compendium Mm. (laughs) and and just start there and try to get a sense of how the medicine might be useful, as you were both saying, for her. Yeah, yeah. What is pine syrup good for? And and it's like she has the power, but she wants to disavow it. You know, she has, and Deb, I think yeah. this is kind of where you were going, you know, she says, um, you know, I really don't want to be a part of it. You know, I'd rather not be involved, you know. So she, she, she wants to kind of distance herself from it, but she has the power. And, you know, what I'll say is that I'm guessing that her child is young because she talks about sort of not sleeping. Does she, does she actually give the child's age? But yeah. anyway, been there and, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's horrific. And it is that period, it's, it is very difficult to kind of claim your own power because you, you do need to be in service to this young child which can be, uh, what I meant is sleep disturbance can be horrific. Being the parent of a young child can be many things, including <laughs> delicious. But the sleep disturbance is really hard. And, you know, it could be that she's at this part of her journey where she needs to claim the potency of that potion. Yeah. You know, I will say, you know, having... Uh, 
having been a woman. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> as far as you, as far as, far as we know, you still are. <laughs> and uh, ha- having been the mother of young children, I, I can appreciate the dilemma that many women and mothers uh, are in uh, of having to use your power on behalf of your needy child, baby, toddler, child, children, of the, that you have to put other people first. And it can lead to a terrible dilemma about to what extent can I use my own power for my own self? And, uh, you know, like your example, Joseph, of can I just go take a painting class? Oh, no, because that will be using resources and time for something frivolous and something that's just for me when I really should be serving my children and my family and so on and so forth. Uh, so I can appreciate the dilemma of uh, of women, especially mothers, who who have to use their power on behalf of others so much of the time. Yeah, and then uh, it makes using your power for yourself, you know, feel feel forbidden, feel yeah, exactly. feel feel selfish. As if it's a zero sum game, and the more I take for myself, the less there's going to be for other people, which is not true. Mm-hmm. It's true to some extent, um, but it's a real dilemma. Yeah. Yes. Thank you.